everybody and welcome to Vet Chat. Today I am very excited to be joined with a brand new guest, Esther, who is going to be sharing her thoughts and experiences on building loyalty through customer experience. Really looking forward to the podcast, um, but before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about our guest. With a deep passion for pets and animals and a background in animal science, Esther combines her love for data with her commitment to customer satisfaction and success. Over the past six years, she has empowered organizations across diverse industries, including veterinary, healthcare, finance, education, and customer service to uncover hidden patterns and trends within their data. Her data-driven insights have consistently helped businesses to make informed decisions enhance customer experiences and boost overall performance. Esther holds over 60 certifications in customer support, experience, satisfaction, success and onboarding and she is a proud certified customer support specialist. Her core analytical expertise enables her to distill complex data into actionable strategies fostering meaningful connections between businesses and their customers. Um, so welcome, Esther. Thank you so much for joining us today at Bet Chat. Thank you. Um, so as I've mentioned just now, um, you've worked in many industries. Um, so to start with, could you tell us a little bit about what customer experience means to you in the context of veterinary, please? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much once again. And I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to Webinar Vet. I'm grateful for everything for inviting me to this podcast today. So customer experience in the veterinary industry is all about the perception of pet owners, pet parents, permit me to say, about the veterinary clinic. It starts from the first time a vet owner, a vet, a, a, vet, a pet owner contacts a, a clinic. So it's about communication, about the staffs, the services they render in this in the in the clinic. Yeah. Got you. Fantastic. That's great. Um and have you um how long is it that you've worked in, in the veterinary industry in particular? Because of my course of studies, I've been in the vet industry for over 10 years. Wow, fantastic. And have you noticed yes. have you noticed a big change with what you do over that time? Yes, yes. As time goes on, there must be changes. From year to year, there must be changes. So yeah, there have been changes and I've made some changes in the veterinary industry using my experience and my expertise. Yeah. Fantastic. And how does customer experience in veterinary care differ from other service-based industries that you've worked in? Thank you very much for that question. It's different because in veterinary industry, we are dealing with pets and pets are humans to me. Yeah. Some pet owners take their pets as, as their children. They have taken them as their children. So there should be emotional connection and there should be complex communication too. There should be a standard communication between the pet owner and the vet clinic. Yeah. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And have there been um have there been any like common challenges in veterinary practices that you've that you're aware of when trying to build the customer loyalty? Yes, the common challenges I've noticed so far is it could be technology. You know, as the day goes by, I wouldn't say yeah now, as the day goes by, we see that um, there are advancements in technology. There are so many advancements in technology. So it could be that um, a clinic is not well advanced technologically to meet up with, with the requirement. So I would also advise, it's just an advice and a plea that vet clinic, to avert, to, to avert these challenges, they should be up to date. They should be up to date technologically and in in every other way. And there should be technical know-how too. Vet clinics should, they should employ people that know how to do this job. Like customer services, I think is emotion. It's all about emotion. 
So vet clinic should look out for people that have this mindset to work and they are not just doing the work because of the money they will be paid because of the gain they will be getting so they should get the people that have this mindset to work and they have passion and empathy for pets yeah so i think that's one of the challenges yeah absolutely and um, the thing with technology is it's advancing so so quickly isn't it so yeah i totally understand if you what was kind of relevant even sort of 12 months ago can be so different to what it is now so yeah thanks Esther that's really good advice and um, so let's talk a little bit about um effective communication do you think okay. that um plays a key role in enhancing customer experience and building loyalty yes sure sure effective communication is very very important is very very important in building loyalty in customer in customer experience and within the veterinary industry. Example, let me give an instance. Let me say a pet owner calls, a pet owner calls and gives many, and you know, they're always anxious. Most of them are always anxious when they call. And um, let me say the person on duty, the customer support agent is on duty, does not communicate effectively effectively to the to the pet owner and that could be a very bad communication and that could be that that could even be the first and last time the pet owner could come to that clinic so effective communication should be should 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 be on stage when a pet owner communicates a, a, a clinic and i even i even advocate for for pet clinics to employ people that like i mentioned before people that have the mindset to do the work and they are passionate about pets so this will also help them to know how the pet owner feel when when their pets are not doing well when they need the medical attention and with that they will communicate with pet owners with empathy fantastic thank you and are there any um examples that you can share from your experiences and um, even just like small changes that you think can improve the customer experience yes thank you for that question and um, for the opportunity to um, give my advice on that what i always advocate for is um, customer service customer representative customer experience is all about, it should be, if pet clinics are employing people, customer service representatives that will give a better customer experience to pet owners, I think um, they should employ people that have data experience. Yeah, I told mm -hmm. you that um, I'm yeah. a data analyst before I transition to customer success specialists yeah they should have people that have data experience because with data experience you might be asking okay let me ask you are you surprised i said that no <laughs> <laughs> okay they should have data experience because with data skills they will be able to know the pain points of pet owners they will know the pain points of the in fact they will even go i even spoke about that was it two days ago or yesterday on my platform my linkedin platform you see that is is beyond just receiving call and um making calls they will get to know they will, if they have data experience they will get to envision problems that pet owners go through before that problem come to pass and before then they have already resolved it that wouldn't be a problem already. Do you understand? They will make researches with data experience. They will analyze and know the challenges, the major challenges that pet owners go through in and the challenges that pet clinics go through. And that will also enhance customer experience in veterinary industry because before it comes, they have already solved the problem. Yeah absolutely no that makes perfect sense thank you and i think um lots of veterinary practices out there they might be thinking how do we become more um data driven and more analytical are there some um metrics or some kpis that practices 
in your opinion, should monitor to gauge whether they are being successful with their customer um, experience efforts? The, they should monitor, okay, if you employ, let me give an example. Let me say Charlie and I, we are customer service representative um, in a telehealth company or so, veterinary telehealth, yeah. And then we have been working for six months for webinar vets. And um, there should be a time when webinar vets analytical team should, should check the website on customer reviews, customer satisfaction, customer, yeah, what they say about the company. And they know the people that are responsible for that. They know that, yes, it is um, Charlie and myself that have been there. So if they have, if they analyze all these things and they see that we are not meeting up to standards, mm -hmm. I think there should be, they should rethink, there should be a rethink. They should look at it if it is something that is worth doing, worth keeping. And if they also want to keep us, there should be training for us. So the metrics is um, customers' reviews, customer recommendation, KPIs like you mentioned, and um, we should um, ask the customers, maybe from time to time, give them questionnaires. Mm -hmm. so, so, so some of them, some of them we accept, some of them we not accept. Give them questionnaires and ask, okay, how likely we recommend my vet clinic to a friend, a colleague, a family. So with that, they should, they should know. Yeah, those are the metrics. And they should also say about that, they should also be present in social media platforms. Know mm -hmm. what know what customers, pets now, pets, pet owners are saying about your clinic. So with that, I think that um, there should be adjustment where yeah, adjustments should be done and um, there should be that there, there should what is better, what is good they can do it in a better way yeah yeah brilliant no some really good advice there thank you and I guess it's also making sure that you take all the feedback on board you know you mentioned doing a survey um there's obviously no point doing a survey and then not looking at the results of the survey and turning it into actions so exactly. yeah so I guess exactly. it's just having the, the um time I guess just to review everything and continuously improve things exactly and something else something else i would love to say you know um we all are we are humans yeah we are humans so um it's just like you maybe webinar vets contacting me it's just an example i'm just trying to cite an instance webinar vets contacting me um esther we want you to come on a podcast we wanted to we're inviting you for a podcast and you invite me january and when the time comes you tell me sorry about that we are not able to meet up february you tell me the same thing march april may june july august there will be excuses like every month you are giving excuses and finally maybe you have made up your mind september there should be a podcast when you come to me do you think i'll take you seriously no probably not no i won't take you out I I'll, I'll, I'll be like ah you have been disappointing me so i will not take you serious i'll be like they are not serious they are not serious minded so it's the same thing as we as um, vet professionals, vet clinic, when pet owners, when they when they add their view, when we when they give their their reviews, their feedback, and we don't do anything about it, and we want them to give more reviews or feedback, do you think they will they will pay attention to that? Mm -hmm. They will not pay attention to that. So my advice to pet to vet clinics is that. When they ask for review, a review, review could be negative, it could be positive. So we shouldn't take the negative reviews to heart and positive reviews. We should not think we have arrived when we will receive a positive review. Positive reviews make, will make you, will make you that thing that makes it to be positive. You can do it in a better way, make it better. The negative review will help you to know the areas we are lagging behind and improve on that. So in conclusion, I would say that when someone gives a review, we should work on that review. And um, 
I think that's the way to get better. Thank you. Brilliant. No, that's great. And I guess as well, um, obviously vets are very time poor, aren't they? It's incredibly busy in practice. Um, and, you know, the whole veterinary teams are. Is there is there things that you'd recommend that people ask their um, clients in practice? If a clinic, if a vet clinic is very good to their customers, giving reviews and feedback will not be an issue at all. I will come back to webinar vets now. Yes, now we feast a podcast and we have made it. So next time, if you come to me and say, oh, Esther, we need you again. Can you come and do this for us? Do you think I can jump? I will jump. On, I, will, I will surely jump on the offer. So if you are good to me, there is no, there is no how I won't give you review and feedback because I personally know that reviews and feedback will make you better, will make the organization better, will make the clinic better. So, and you know, customers, one thing about customers, we don't know, um, maybe people that they are patronizing don't know, but I always like to see myself in the customer point of view. Yes, as a customer, I wouldn't want to be trying these products, trying this clinic, trying the going from one place to the other. I like sticking to a particular clinic for my pets because we are talking about lives. We're talking about it just like humans going from one clinic to the other. But if you have a very good clinic, a very good doctor that attends to you, that pay that pay good attention, and um, whenever you call it answers. There's no way you won't give review and feedback to that clinic because you want them to do better because you want to even continue with them. So I will advise vets and vet clinic. It starts from the very first time a customer reaches out to you. A pet owner reaches out to you. Oh, my pet is this. You should not, you should not begin to ignore the, or say, oh, uh, calm down and feel like feel unconsigned about about that when we are empathetic and we we'll feel consigned about these pets like humans i think that getting reviews from their parents their owners will not be an issue at all brilliant thanks esther and do you think with the rise in telemedicine do you think that impacts customer loyalty obviously if if pet owners aren't going into a physical practice they're obviously having their consultation online have you do you think that impacts customer loyalty and the customer experience so will i say yes or no um some pet owners they wouldn't like the idea they don't like i would let me not say wouldn't they don't like the idea of telemedicine they want to, they want, they, they need a physical clinic. They need a physical clinic where they can walk, walk into, see what is happening. Why others, with the advent of, of AI and everything now, I think that telemedicine is, is a very good thing for customer experience because except for clinics that are running two for seven, like they are always online. Yes, aside because those clinics too are very good because it's it can be let me say okay a clinic closes by 5 p.m 8 to 5 8 to 5 p.m and between the hours of 6 6 p.m 8 p.m a pet needs an urgent attention how if there is nothing like telemedicine how would that how, mm. how, how would that experience look like so that's it that's the area that we should look into and then it comes handy so i think um Telemedicine enhances, yes, it enhances customer experience and customer loyalty. But I will also say that while we are um, advising pet clinics, a vet to go that way, they should also be careful because we know that it's not everything that is out there that is real. That was great. And I think just touching on some of the points that you made, do you think there are um, any other future trends in customer experience that we should look out for as, as veterinary practices? Yes, there are trends. So um, we should we should look out for personalization. When a pet, when a pet owner comes to you, 
when they come to you, oh, my pet is having this, having this symptom, we should not, um, we should not just give them a generalized solution. So we should um, give them um, a personalized, tailor their, tailor their issues with the experience and solutions you are giving to them. And um, we are also looking at, at um, data-driven insights. Data-driven insight, we should then utilize data analytics, like I've said earlier. We should look look out for for metrics to look out for, and um, we should then um, look out for telemedicine, and then um, that's what we mentioned before, telemedicine and virtual care. We should because that will really be a thing. Many clinics are going virtual, so we should also look out for them. We should expand our our consultation and remote consultation. Yeah, and um, we should also train our staffs to have empathy and um, they should have emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should be empath empathetic, they should have emotional intelligence. And, um, and I think that a uh, vet clinic, the trend now, I, I, I don't know how, how it works over there, but over here, customer support, customer service should be people that are in the industry, people that are within the vet industry. They will understand, they will understand what pet owners are going through better. So with that, there won't be need to give more training on um, emotional intelligence, being empathetic about pets, and the rest, yeah. And then, sorry, I didn't mention social media evolution. Yeah, that should be it. Okay. Yeah, social media ev evolution. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you very much. How do you think um, the social media will evolve in the coming years? Yeah, social media in the coming years, <laughs> everything now, er everything now is going online. Everything now, like everything we are doing is, is going online. So mm -hmm. vet clinics should they should stay responsive. They should stay responsive and active on social media. And you know what? The funny thing is you you might have hundreds of customers in a year, and just one customer that gives a review about your clinic could spoil many other good experiences you've had. So if there's a strong social media um, presence and maybe that customer gives a review, it might not even be a customer. We're not talking about real customer that had a bad experience. It could be maybe somebody, just a normal person that wants to paint the organization black. and there is a strong social media presence by the customer support of, of the of the vet clinic and they see that they can address it immediately but if there is no strong social media presence that could be a thing that could spoil the name of that organization so yeah yeah brilliant i know it's it's with everything i guess now isn't it if you go to um you know use any sort of service I personally will always look for, you know, their social media presence, their reviews, what feedback they've got, et cetera. It really does help with that sort of buying decision. Fantastic. Oh, well, Esther, we are just running out of time, but is there anything that you wanted to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? We've already talked about social media. Um, I will just say that our social media should not, it should not just be Facebook. We should be on all social media platforms where we know that pet owners, where we can find these pet owners. There should be, it could be LinkedIn, it could be Instagram, it could be S, it could be Facebook, anywhere it is at all. We should, we should try to being those social we should spread our tent some people just limit their social media to maybe facebook or linkedin or s so we should be everywhere and just like i mentioned earlier i want to say again that pet clinic they should veterinary clinic they should always have customer support so have a very great 
customer experience and loyalty, they should employ people that have the mind of work. They have this mindset to work and they are passionate about, about pets, about the, they are empathetic, they have data analytics experience to, to do what they ought to do. And lastly, they should take reviews and feedback seriously. When a customer gives a, a review or feedback, they should work on it. If it's a good feedback, improve on that, make it better. If it's a bad review, that's not the end of the world. Make things, look out for ways to make things better. And um, sorry, I didn't even mention incentives. Veterinary clinics should look out for ways to give incentives to their, either their staffs and pet owners. They should look out for incentives. Incentives can be anything. It, it doesn't need to cost fortune. And that could be a very good way for customer loyalty. Brilliant. Thanks, Esther. Good little gem there thrown in at the end. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you mentioned earlier that you're quite active on LinkedIn. Um, what's the best way for people to find you on LinkedIn if they'd like to connect? Okay, my name is Esther Ofro, CCSS on LinkedIn. Um, I just search for Esther Ofro, but I don't know if there might be others, but... I am the customer-centric data analyst. So um, with that, I think uh, it will be easier. Fantastic. Oh, that's great, Esther. Well, thank you so much for your time and sharing all your insights. Um, and yeah, best of luck. It'll be fascinating to see how things evolve in the coming years. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.